What's up guys, it's Ophilly215 here and today I'm going to show you how to make the x-ray scan effect in Sony Vegas Pro 12. Okay, so what you actually want to do is you want to come into your timeline here and import whatever clip you have that you get the wall bang on. This is my clip. Okay, I'm shooting this guy, I shoot again and then I get a wall bang through the wall. So what you actually want to do is go to the moment where you are about to shoot through the wall, wherever you think would be best visually wise like right here I could see everything nice and well the gun really isn't full blown in the center of the screen because I'm running just wherever you think it would be best to pause it so split the clip right there and go over to your preview menu make sure that that's on best full and it's gonna make the preview window at best quality then click this floppy disk and you'll take a picture so once you take that picture and you have the uh, clip split, you're going to want to drag that onto your timeline. Readjust it accordingly. So now that when you play it, it just pauses. And then it will resume. So next thing you want to do is you want to hit Control shift q or right-click and add um, an extra video track. Okay, so next thing you want to do what I would suggest is, is in whatever game you're playing, go into a private match and go to the other side of whatever wall you're shooting through and just look straight or whatever direction you're looking in, you know, right here. So, for example, I went to the other side of this wall in a private match. This is what's on the other side of the wall. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll make it work. So, import, you know... Use your capture card, record you looking in that direction, then come back, go into the preview menu right here, put it to best, click the floppy disk, there's your picture. So import it, put it on top of your other picture, and then what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to go back into your uh, projects right here, everything you've imported, and you're going to want to grab that same picture you have on the bottom, and you're going to want to resize it, but the, on this picture, you're going to want to go to the event pan crop. Make sure that uh, you are clicked right at the beginning of the picture so that you don't keyframe anything. You're going to want to go to mask. And you're going to want to zoom in on this bitch. All right, well, this is trying to get my preview screen a little bit bigger here. Okay. So you're going to want to zoom in on this. I'm using my, you know, uh pad here that moves my cursor so you're going to want to make sure you click the anchor creation tool and whatever you're masking out which is this wall for me whatever you're masking out you know just mask it out if it's a wall you know just mask it out I'm masking this out right here and then you're going to want to go to where it says mode positive you're going to want to put that to negative and then feather type hit both so what it what it's pretty much doing is feather type both. Um, you're gonna want to hit three, and that's gonna smooth out the edges. So I don't know if you just noticed that, but if I were to hit zero again, make sure you're looking over here. It's gonna actually. Oh well, maybe it looks better without it. All right, whatever. Well, in most cases you want to actually smooth it out, but it's actually putting like a blur there. So. In this case, you don't have to, but in most cases, you want to actually smooth out what you're masking, but this actually looks a lot better without it, so learn something new. All right, so now that that's masked, you want to make sure that, so if I were to mute this track, this is what's in back, and that's actually this picture right here, but as you can see, kind of fits perfectly already. That looks pretty natural. Um... I'll actually fix it just a little bit here. So I'm going to drag this away so you can see the preview menu. Okay, so we can see that in what we're masking, it looks like there's a pole there. So I'll drag this up just a little bit. See if we could get it looking normal-ish. Eh, I'd say that looks about all right all right we'll leave it at that so there it is that looks pretty normal that looks like you're seeing through the wall 
Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to make another video track and this time you could do this in whatever game. You're going to get a picture of somebody holding a sniper rifle in the game you're using, whatever. Whoever the guy you're killing, get a picture of him. So I'm sure in whatever game there's only a certain select few in Call of Duty, it's the guy wearing the ghillie suit and then like three other characters in online play. So I killed the guy holding a sniper rifle. So I didn't even take this picture from this particular game. Go to whatever film clip you have that best suits you. Get a picture of somebody holding the weapon of the guy that you kill in this video. And for me, it's the sniper rifle. So I took a picture of the guy, went into Pixlr, and which is um, a picture editing uh, website. It's free. Check it out. I went into Pixlr, and I pretty much masked out everything that was around him. So it's just the sniper rifle guy. You could go to Google if you want. Um, I'm going to shorten this so that it fits the clip. Make sure you're at the beginning of the picture. And you can pretty much resize this how you want. So, going to hold control. I'm going to make him shrink down. So now, put him right about here, I'd say. Alright, that, that looks normal enough. So, pretty much, bang. He's right there. Then you shoot through the wall, kill him. Obviously, you know, you can make it perfect, you know, whatever. I'll move him over a little bit. All right. So, next thing you want to do, that's cool. Now you want the grid effect. So, you're going to want to hit Control Q again. And I already have a grid, you know, whatever. So, what I'm now going to do is, you're going to want to go over here to the, where it's, uh, you know, the second track. And you're going to want to go down to this film looking thing. And you're going to want to go to screen. So now that it's it's screened out all the black, it's just these green lines, which is exactly what we want. You're going to readjust that to fit everything. Make sure you're at the beginning. Go to event pan crop. Okay, so what we're actually going to want to do here is you don't have to make anything perfect because you're going to mask this anyway. So... Actually, you could just leave this as is, go down to mask, and you're going to want to go over to this circle tool here, and just draw what you think is a perfect circle. You know, whatever, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, right here looks about nice. I'm actually going to shrink that down a little bit. Alright. Right there looks good. So, we're going to leave that. Next thing you want to do is... You want to look like, you want to ha make sure it looks like it's scanning. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to go into your video effects. Or actually not video effects. You're going to go to media generators. You're going to go to color gradient and then elliptical white. So that's what this is. And you pretty much drag it onto here and just shrink it down, you know, to whatever size, whatever. And then you click one right here. You could change the color. You get the idea. So, I'm going to delete that because I already have one. Bring it right here. So, the next thing you're going to do is, once again, you're going to go over to uh, the beginning of the video track where the film is. Hit screen again. So, there you go. Now it's screening. Okay, so you're going to want to shrink this down with every other clip you have going on here. And you're going to go to the uh, event pan crop. Okay, you're going to zoom out a little bit. And what I would suggest is just go to the top of where um, the circle grid is and then move a little bit farther on your timeline. And you could hit, you know, insert keyframe, but you're going to insert one anyway when you move uh, this right here. So as you can see, I just created a keyframe. Make it so that it goes to the bottom now. And in case you don't know what keyframes does, it's going to go from the top to the bottom, but it's it's going to move. So as you can see, it does that. So go back in, obviously make another one. You could just click the first one, hit copy, then control V, 
and it's going to go to the top again. So, you know, whatever. We could do it about that far apart. So now, now it's screening. So now that you got that, I would say give it a little bit of pizzazz. So what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to go to video effects. You're going to want to go down to film light, strong warm, and add it on to this. You're going to hit this little clock thing that says animate. And I would say just make about five, but first go to the first keyframe right here and bring it down all the way, strength. You know, make another one all the way up and continue on till you have about five. Or that's, that's at least for me, you know, you can make more if you want, doesn't matter. So, there we go. Um, looks about right. So, now, alright, um, let's see, what am I doing wrong here? I think, alright, so I'm on position. Let's drag this out a little bit. Alright. So this is just making it so it takes longer to go up and down. You know, a little bit more of that gives you more room. Um, Alright, we're gonna... We're gonna shorten all the clips here. So you're gonna wanna insert another video track. I'm just shortening this because it's taking a little bit. Like, these clips are too long. So you're gonna click on the top video track here if you wanna cut everything. So... I'm going to hit uh, S on my keyboard, and that's cut every clip I have in the timeline under that video track. So I'm just hitting Control, clicking everything, and what that'll do is select everything you're clicking, delete, bringing this over. I'm just making it so this is, you know, a little more pristine. So back into position. Alright. Dragging everything out here. Alright. So, back, hit your uh, event effects. So, now this looks good. Just drag everything out accordingly. Okay. Now let's take a look at it. Alright, so... I don't, it was a little laggy there. Let me show you again. So, it, in case you don't notice, it's actually getting lighter and darker just a little bit. You know, it's, it just makes it look nicer. Even if it's real quick and you don't notice it, it's still more appealing to the eye than, you know, if, let's click that off. It's just blah. So, you know, make sure that, you know, you do that. Adds a little more spice to it. So, once you added that effect to that, you could do the same exact thing to the guy holding the sniper. So, click the clock tool again, exit out of that. Uh, I'm just going back in here to click right where uh, the last keyframe is. So now you're right there on your timeline. Go back to the sniper, event effects, and add a keyframe. So, pretty much going to the first one, bringing it all the way down. Second one, bringing it all the way up. You know, I'm just doing it till I have five again, because that's how many I have before. So, there you go. And then this one would go all the way down. Okay, so now I'm dragging them out accordingly so that they're spaced nice and right. Oh, shit. Okay. So now let's take a look at it. Okay, so it looks nice, but he's being detected as soon as everything comes up. I don't like the way that looks. So we can zoom in on the timeline here, and right about when the light gets to him, you're going to take the sniper on the video preview and drag this clip out so that he doesn't immediately get seen and it detects him. So, you know, you could, you know, get creative, do it in your own way, but... This is how I have it. So now that looks about good. Um, all right, I'd say everything's about right. There it is. 
So now, obviously, if you want to add a little more to it, then you've deleted the audio to your uh, video here. So then you could go into, you know, music or actually, I already have it on here. All right. So, you know, get the drop or somewhere that it's nice. Uh, let me lower this so you don't go deaf. Go to 8.1. Okay, so bringing it over. Okay, so wherever you do the shot, you want to make it so that's where like the drop is. So I know right here, right here is where the drop is. So I'm going to make sure that that matches with the shot. There's the shot. And... Okay, so there it is. All right. So then we could drag this to the left, and that will add in everything we cut out. But we clearly cut out too much. So now, obviously, you know, I'm going to drag a fade into it. So I'm going to fade it about a minute, five seconds. You could do the same thing to your everything at the beginning of your track, which is just should be the you know, normal video, and you could do the same exact thing to the end here, I'm gonna cut this so it matches the clip here, drag it out another minute, five seconds, alright, oh, well, it's not exactly a minute five, but whatever, alright, so, there we go, it's about to be a finished product right here, and there we go. So, this should be your finished product. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Leave any comments, anything like that, anything that I might have left out. If you want to see other effects, uh, tutorials on how to do things, let me know. You know, I'll do it. So. This is my first uh, tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed. Click the old Philly 205 watermark in the bottom right hand corner, and that will take you straight to my channel, guys. And as always, it's old Philly 205. Peace!